in this video, we will learn about all the medical facts about dyslipidemia. Lipids, such as cholesterol or triglycerides, are absorbed from the intestines and carried throughout the body via lipoproteins for energy, steroid production, or bile acid formation. Triglycerides, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, or LDL, and high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, or HDL, are important components in these pathways. If you have dyslipidemia, it usually means your LDL levels or your triglyceride levels are too high, it can also mean your HDL levels are too low. LDL cholesterol is the bad type of cholesterol because it can build up and form clumps or plaques in the walls of your arteries. HDL cholesterol is the good type of cholesterol because it helps remove LDL from your blood. The calories you consume but do not immediately burn are what produce triglycerides. When you need energy, triglycerides are released from fat cells where they are stored. Triglycerides can build up if you consume more calories than you expend. You are more likely to experience a heart attack or stroke. If you have high levels of triglycerides and LDL cholesterol, you are also at risk if you have low HDL cholesterol levels. Dyslipidemia may be primary or secondary. Primary dyslipidemia is inherited, but secondary dyslipidemia is acquired in the sense that it develops from other causes, such as obesity or diabetes mellitus. The terms dyslipidemia and hyperlipidemia are frequently used interchangeably. That is not entirely accurate, though, high amounts of LDL cholesterol or triglycerides are referred to as hyperlipidemia. Levels of these blood fats that are either greater or lower than the usual range are referred to as dyslipidemia. What are the causes of dyslipidemia and who is at risk? Dyslipidemia can be brought on by a number of habits such as smoking, cigarettes, drinking alcohol excessively, gaining weight, becoming older, and eating foods high in saturated fat. If one or both of your parents had dyslipidemia, you are more likely to have primary dyslipidemia. Up until menopause, women often have lower LDL cholesterol levels than men. Women's LDL levels start to increase at that point. Your risk of developing dyslipidemia may also increase if you have diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, or chronic renal disease. What signs or symptoms indicate dyslipidemia? You might not even be aware that you have dyslipidemia. Similar to excessive hypertension, high cholesterol lacks overt symptoms. Frequently, it is found during a routine blood test. Dyslipidemia can nevertheless cause cardiovascular disease which might present as symptoms. Both peripheral artery disease, which is a blockage in the arteries of your legs, and coronary artery disease, which is a blockage in the arteries of your heart, are linked to high LDL cholesterol levels. The main symptom of coronary artery disease is chest pain, and the main symptom of peripheral artery disease is leg pain when walking. How is dyslipidemia determined to exist? You may determine whether your LDL, HDL, and triglyceride levels are high, low, or within a safe range with a straightforward blood test. Does a blood test require you to fast? The truth is that you can get your cholesterol checked without fasting. Experts once thought that fasting beforehand delivers the most precise findings. This is due to the possibility that recent food consumption may have an impact on your low-density lipoprotein or bad cholesterol. How do I interpret my results? The appropriate range for total cholesterol is 200 mg per deciliters or less, the borderline range is 200 to 239 mg per deciliters, and the high range is 240 mg per deciliters or more. The acceptable range for LDL cholesterol is below 100 mg per deciliters, the borderline range is between 130 and 159 mg per deciliters, the high range is between 160 to 190 mg per deciliters, and the extremely high range is between 190 mg per deciliters and above. The acceptable range for HDL cholesterol is 40 mg per deciliters or greater, the low range is 39 mg per deciliters or less, and the ideal range is 60 mg per deciliters or higher. 
The acceptable range for triglycerides is 149 mg per deciliters or less, the borderline range is 150 to 199 mg per deciliters, the high range is 200 mg per deciliters or more, and the extremely high range is 500 mg per deciliters or more. How to treat dyslipidemia? Statins are the drugs most frequently prescribed to treat dyslipidemia. By inhibiting an enzyme that produces cholesterol, statins are prescription drugs that lower cholesterol levels. This action reduces your total cholesterol levels including your LDL or bad cholesterol. It also increases your level of HDL or good cholesterol. There are many varieties of statins, each of which functions slightly differently and varies in strength. In addition to or instead of a statin, your doctor may also recommend other drugs to lower cholesterol. Izetimab and fibrates are some of these non-statin medications. What lifestyle changes can help in treatment of dyslipidemia? You may be able to control your cholesterol and triglyceride levels by making lifestyle adjustments. Changing your diet is the first step. Consuming less alcohol, processed sugar, and saturated fat should be among the changes. Your diet may benefit from including more fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and healthy grains. Foods that can lower cholesterol levels includes legumes, avocados, nuts, fatty fish like salmon, dark chocolate, cocoa, garlic, soy foods, tea, dark leafy greens, and extra virgin olive oil. Additionally, regular exercise and weight loss may help you lower your cholesterol levels. In the end, if you liked this video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button to receive all new updates. Goodbye!